Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dual Screens Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Stephen Fontana, and with me, as always, he's in one of these other four boxes. That's right. We have four boxes this week. He's Andy Asimakis. How are you, Andy? This is going to be a wild one, I feel. It's going to get crazy up in this place. Yes. and L- you- Lines will be drawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, alliances will be set. Mm-hmm. Deception will be will be will be made, will end all or friendships. friendships will die. Plus, the energy of this being episode sixty eight, like you could feel it. the the oh, The tension right in the room is palpable. You could cut it with a with a it's, knife. It's right there. Indeed, indeed. It's so close. It's so very very close. Joining us this week are Moeen Palavan and Kasra Rahimi. Nailed it. Got it. Said it slowly, but I got it. I, I nailed don't it. I think you did. I nailed it. <laughs> no, we didn't. I'm happy. Yep. I did it. I fucking nailed that, Andy. I nailed that like a split hog and you know it. The developers of Republic of Jungle, a social deduction party game for five to ten players about animals. Well, getting political. That's right. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. How are you? Great. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to be on 68th podcast. That's right. That's <laughs> right. right. Yep. And... Uh, <laughs> Happy to talk to you. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, we're happy to have you here. Uh, when Andy sent Andy sent me um, the trailer that you guys just recently put out, um, said we we should we should reach out and yeah, this would be one of those great games for us to you know to make a video over and everything like that. And I'm and I'm watching it and the whole time I'm thinking, oh man, oh man, we're gonna hate each other. Oh man, but yeah, this is definitely something even I want. Yeah. We do. Even though the, even more than we already do is correct. But before we get into the game and before you tell us all about it, listeners, if you're new here and like our guests, this is the Dual Screens Podcast, the world's number one indie developer interview podcast, probably. Everyone in the gaming industry, be it a programmer, an artist, a voice actor, a producer, a PR rep, everyone has a story to tell, and we want to be their platform to do so. The show posts each and every Friday for your listening pleasure on your podcast service of choice, including our home Podbean and in video form on youtube.com slash dual screens TV. That's youtube.com slash D-U-E-L screens TV. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that little sub button. We would love it. We would love it if you did it. So just do it. All right. Let's, uh, let's dive right into the show. Andy, Mm -hmm. what is our lead off question of the show? So You know, a lot of things went through my mind when I try to formulate this week's lead off question, Steven. Indeed. I think this is for either one of our guests. So Uh you jump in whenever you feel like it. But the question is, how big exactly are your balls? Oh, okay. Be- because, uh, you know, you quit your jobs at Microsoft and Twitch mm-hmm. to make a game with a character called President Puma who resides <laughs> in the Bite House. <laughs> so I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> How big? You mean, you mean that sounds very <laughs> Oh no, it's very courageous. <laughs> very brave. Well, the line between it is exactly and what the it's industry a thin line, yeah. It yeah. needs this type of courage. <laughs> Cuz I feel like a game like this needs to exist. That's exactly, and, uh, exactly why you <laughs> To add to that, when we when we were deciding to do this, it was at the midst of the like at the beginning of the pandemic, like in March, uh-huh. I think, when everything was like crashing and burning. Goodness. And Moin and I were th- talking about should we quit our jobs at this point? Like the economy is falling down. I, I talked to manager in Jan- I talked to my manager in like January, and I took like a month off to just reflect. And and by the time that I had to make a decision, like the the whole world was just burning, and like nobody knew what's going on. And but at that point, like if when you're making a decision like this, there's no going back. Like at your, you're at the tipping point, and it's just it's much harder to come back than just whatever happens you have to you have to pull the trigger at that point uh uh yeah and we did it it seems like you you like with that go ahead andy go ahead it's your follow-up go do it i was gonna say yeah i'm not sure if you guys got the memo but 
gaming has boomed during the <laughs> pandemic. Like, you didn't know back then. What yeah. No. You didn't know when we were making the decision, but it's like then Jackbox went viral and like yeah. the Mongos came out. Exactly. It came out. It was there. Yeah, but yeah. It was there, but yeah, it hit. Yeah. It hit. It, you know, and, and that's what I was going to say. You kind of like, it was almost like just serendipitous how it all kind of fell into place because that's exactly what happened. Like gaming with your friends via you know, video chat became normal all of a sudden. It was something that you see, you saw every big streamer doing. You saw games come out literally in reaction to the success of some of these games. And they, they, they were built so quickly um, and pushed onto, you know, publishers were reaching out to streamers saying, please play our game with your friends you know, play it, you know, whatever. Um, or like the games pivoted a lot. Um, we, we've seen that a lot as well, but you know, here you guys are and you're making a game where we're going to accuse each other and try and kill each other. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> cause among us was one of those games that like it caught fire and it caught fire very quickly and burned for quite a long time. Um, so it's it's nice to see that when out of these out of the ashes of this burn, you're gonna see not just copycats. Um, you're gonna see because you're gonna see games that are gonna take that what makes the core of what that is, um, which is the social ex- uh, experience with your friends, um, getting getting to know people in a different way, which was always fun with with those types of games, um, and bringing it to video games because we've had these types of games, tabletop, right? Like you have uh, Secret Hitler. I believe is is one of the popular ones that's that's you know very similar to th- to this kind of style. So can you talk about how you landed on this style of game and if were there any decisions made in reaction to the success of these other games? Moin, do you want to take this? Okay. Um so the story <laughs> of Republic of Jungle uh, it was back in 2017 and Castro and I back then, but we both were working for Microsoft and we had this like game nights and uh, we were playing a lot of like social deduction games uh, and like some nights we had a lot of like board games that were four players, six players, a lot of, you know, our favorites. Mm-hmm. And then the group grew larger and we kind of, it's, it's interesting like how much, like what a huge gap there is. Like once you move past like eight players and you, you quickly run out of options of to, to play and you either have to like play, I don't know, charades or, or, uh, or, or, or a social deduction game. That's basically it. And at some point someone introduced Jackbox to our group. And uh, after a while, we realized that we're just playing Jackbox, even though we don't like like it that much because it's too casual for our taste. We, mm-hmm. we like like more hardcore, midcore uh, games. And but it's just so hard to get people to set up, especially if you got like ten people. People aren't gonna move around for you and like get around the table if you have it. If you can, if you have a table that can sit like ten people, and then. Uh, there was this game, like, I don't know if you've played uh, Werewolf Ultimate One Night. Yes, yes. It's like the short version of Werewolf, yeah. And uh, with 10 players, you have to go through, like, a sequence of actions, and everybody closes their eyes, and they move, people move, like, uh, cards, and very take simple actions that have to be taken, like, in sequence, and everybody closes their eyes. And it would take, like, three tries, maybe, like, 15 minutes to go through that phase for us. It was just such a hassle. And then it was hard to convince people. So we just played Jackbox. And at that point, uh, I was like, there is a better way. Like, what if we just do Jackbox with with the game mechanics that we like? And it was simple as that. And uh, I did a prototype of that exact game, Ultimate Werewolf One Night. And that 15 minutes became, and I don't exaggerate, it became, like, five seconds. Because if oh, you wow. think about it, if you think about it, the action is simple. You just like pick a player or like pick a card or whatever. And it has to be covert and it has to be done sequentially. So in code, <laughs> the server code is just, it doesn't matter, right? It's, it's covert. It, nobody sees what you do. And uh, it does it in order. And like you take a few seconds to do your action and you get the result back on your screen that this happened. You, this is right. what you see. And you write in the discussion phase. And that was like when it clicked. It was like, there is something here, but not something that you would quit your job at Microsoft for. And (laughs) that's one. (laughs) But it's something that, you know, started the itch. Uh, Mm. And that's where it began. Uh, I'll let 
to, you know, Castro take the rest of the story. If you have any questions about that part. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, so, so for three years, like starting from 2017 till like uh, late, uh, early 2020, uh, we were prototyping different ideas that we have on this platform. We weren't only focusing on social deduction uh, type of games on, on the Jackbox platform, which is like device as the input. We were also like trying different type of uh, mostly uh, tabletop games like uh, hidden movement games or like racing games, race to the end games, those type of games. But at the end of the day, we figured out social deduction uh, fits the best in this platform. And uh, we have these different ideas that can be fun. And we were having the most fun in, a, in the group that we were playtesting the game. Mm. And um, so, yeah. We quit our job in March, in April, or when was it yeah, exactly? So, like, end of, towards the end of March in 2020. So, yeah. why why do you think the social de de deduction genre works so well? Uh, so, personally, I think it, it, it uh, removes some of the hassles when it, uh, like, comparing to the tabletop versions, uh, it removed the moderator. We don't need the uh, God person that moderates the game and no one has to close their eyes when you're playing on this platform because everyone can take their actions on their phone and you don't have to close their everyone's eye and then tell them to like wake up now you have to do this stuff they can uh, take all those actions on their phone and uh, I think it's more convenient for people to play this type of game in this platform uh, comparing to other games. Uh, and like when we talk about the game to the fans of the genre, the, the fans of social deduction, they see the value. They, they, they understand when we're talking that we don't need a moderator for this game or you don't need to close your eyes or like move the cards around on the table. Because when you're trying to move the cards around on the table, sometimes you make a noise and someone else notices and the game is ruined. But, but for, with our game, everything is being happening on your phone. So... Yeah, and in case I just just to give context, in case someone doesn't know like what Jackbox is, is that you play the game on, you run the game on screen uh, on Xbox or smart TV or whatever platform you have, and then instead of a controller, you use your phone to connect uh, to the game and play the game. And because social deduction it relies on secrets, well, when everyone has a private screen, you can basically share secrets between players. Be without any hassle of other players, you know, like without like basically all players having to synchronize on something. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very powerful. And that's a really great fit for this type of game. Cool. So it, it, go ahead, Andy. I was going to say, it sounds like this was born out of mainly like addressing the shortcomings of these types of games. Yeah, like exactly. you're, you're, you're playing it and you're thinking, how can I quality of life this stuff, make it better for, cause I like this genre, but it can be so much better than what it is now. And you actually took all that and made your own game based on how to improve, which sounds like crazy talk to me. <laughs> I mean, why not? Like you <laughs> want something to exist in the market. It doesn't exist in the market. Mm -hmm. So you build it and you, and it's, 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 you know, it's in the range that you think you can build it, you mm -hmm. know? So, and if all those three comes together, I think you have an idea and you can go for it. All right, it so, takes time, but, yeah, so you know. cool. let's let's talk about the actual game. Let's talk about the mechanics because uh, people, you know, social deduction. It, it may, people may not know what that is, but essentially, it's trying to figure out who the bad guy is in the group. Um, but talk about this game. Talk about what what's specific to this. So uh, the basic mechanics of the game uh, come from a, a similar game, a tabletop game called Resistance or Avalon. Uh, it's not as well known as uh, Verbal for Mafia, but it's one of the uh, more popular games uh, in the genre. Uh, and uh, we, we built on top of the, uh, the existing uh, basic mechanics. So using what uh, platform enabled us to do, we added uh, different mechanics like power drops, uh, uh, double votes, uh, I don't know, different uh, deadline mechanics, those kind of things. But let me describe the basic mechanics first for listeners who have never heard of Resistance or Avalon before, and then we can, uh, if sure. you want, we can dive into like yes, more absolutely. complicated mechanics yes, that yes, we yes. added to the game <laughs> because of the platform. So uh, unlike Among Us or Werewolf, uh, you don't kill anyone in this game. So you have five tasks that you need to get done uh, as a team. 
And then uh, among this team, there are some uh, imposters or traitors that uh, you don't want to get on the task for them to be able to fail a task. The way our, the, the world of our game is in Republic of Jungle, a country in a parallel world, which is a superpower. And they have this problem in their White House that uh, there are some leakers in the White House and they're trying to leak secret information. And the president, President Puma, has to get these five important tasks done. And he has to make this task force and get uh, some of his staff on the task forces. But he uh, wants to make sure that no one leaks those uh, information, those confidential information. So whenever you're forming a task force, uh, you have to vote for uh, the people that are on that task force. And you have to make sure that everyone on the task force are loyalists to President Puma and you don't get any leakers on that task force. Mm. So the way the game works is that uh, it's, uh, there are five tasks and whichever team uh, manages to turn the tides uh, in, uh, on their side for three tasks, they will win the game. So like if you're a loyalist and you manage to successfully complete three tasks, you win the game. Or if you're a leaker and you manage to successfully leak three tasks, you win the game. Do you want to give more details? So I, I want to go a little bit high level and just say yeah, there, sure, there was ahead. Mafia, Werewolf, and then there was other games that like, you know, try to fix the problems with those games, which one of them was like people get killed and don't play and after you have to just sit around and watch other people play. Mm -hmm. So Avalon was basically Resistance and Avalon, the, their main contribution to the genre was that they got rid of that with some mechanics. And, and uh, th those mechanics are the main inspiration for Republic of Jungle. And we add some mechanics on top of it uh, that the designers for Resistance and Avalon couldn't do because they were on a tabletop setting. Now, we, because we have, we have this new like Jackbox-like setting, we can add these you know, very subtle mechanics that we basically change, the, you know, change how the secrets are spread uh, among the players and create like, more scenarios, more variations in how the game goes. And that's that's the in terms of game mechanics, that's like our contribution basically to the genre. How how does a a leaker how how what are what are their tasks look like? Are they what what kind of stuff do they do that is secretive? Like how, what are players looking for the leakers to do? So the leakers here is actually what they do is very simple. The main thing about the game, the main what well, the main like phase of the game is voting. And that's when, uh, as a loyalist, you have to, you know, use your best judgment, deduction, you know, deception. Uh, so the main mechanic, if you, as a leaker, you just basically, the main mechanic that you use is deception. You just want to convince people to get on task forces. Uh, and once you are in the task force, uh, you can just, it's just a simple binary decision of, you know, uh, cooperating or defecting, or we call it leaking. Uh, so once you're in a task force, you have the choice to leak or you have the choice to lay low and, you know, cooperate. So you, you know, keep yourself undercover and, you know, hit, hit them later in another task. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but the interesting, like, usually these games, it's, they, they, they used to be like a lot of fun for the traitor party, like, or leakers. And the, basically the vanilla guy, like the, 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 the regular villager or, you know, uh, the, uh, we call them loyalists or staffers. They would get bored because uh, they wouldn't have any roles or any any special abilities. But in this game, uh, we drop specific powers that give them just a little bit of nudge, or we give them some powers that they, if they use intelligently, they they can get information. But if they miss, it can backfire. Mm. Uh, and that makes like that's what we add to the genre. That like that we make the game interesting for everyone. You know, like in Among Us, people like to be. Uh, like most people like to be the imposter to ha to have sure. more, like more fun, right? Uh, right. But uh, I think in our game, it's like kind of feels very balanced in terms of like you you really don't wish to get a specific role because all the roles can can be very interesting, you know. And what go over some of those roles? Like, what kind of roles can can people play in this game? Um, so the main role in the game uh, is is directly inspired from Avalon, and it's called the agent, uh, and is um, is a loyalist, is on the good guys, who knows all the all the leakers, who knows the identity. And in terms of Ooh. story, uh, the the agent is like a special interest agent in the White House, and has like power. But if if the cover, but it's undercover, and if the cover is blown, it's going to be a big scandal, and the loyalists are going to lose because President mm. Puma is going to be interesting. So, 
Wow. Oh, okay. The agent, the agent knows, but it can't get, give it away because the leakers are trying to figure out who the agent is. And that creates tension for, for both, you know, for both sides. And we have some other mechanics that kind of like builds on the top of the, how the agent works. For example, the agent never gets a special power. So if you're like a regular mm -hmm. loyalist and you get a power, like I investigate Andy and I know that Andy's a leaker. So if I come out and say, guys, I know I investigated Andy's a leaker. Clearly, I'm also yes, giving away the information that I'm not the agent. So I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make leakers go, you know, one step closer to finding the agent and winning the game. So mm. there's always a risk mm. in what kind of information you share. So all of the like mathematical mechanics of the game have like a bearing on the social aspect of the game. Uh, and mm. these are the mechanics that like that three years of prototyping, these are like, at, at first we were, this is important. At first we were so excited about this platform. So like, we're going to do crazy things with this platform. And it turns out even like small details, what people do with those mechanics is more important than what you have in your mind. So we would change mm. something and go to like a game night and people do crazy things and have their own interpretation and do like play mind games. So we realize, we realize that like the mechanics that we have to do are have to be very subtle and, and it took time to to build those. Uh, but uh, but I think we're very confident like we, we are the kind of the core <laughs> audience for the game that we built and we took it to like BGG con played with some other hardcore players of social deduction. Uh, it, it was really fun to see people respond and you know get our vision and play and have fun and give us like uh, you know, give us the kind of feedback that you know that, okay, they, they know, they know, like they, they give you a feedback that, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. they paid attention, they had fun and, you know, uh, they, they get it. And that was, that was a big moment for us. How can things backfire during a, a typical game? Like, let's say as a loyalist, let's say you investigate another loyalist. Are there repercussions for that? Yeah. How does so that work? That's what Moin said. There's a risk and reward to claiming uh, the information. Like if you claim that you investigated me and I'm a leaker. Uh, uh, so we, we have a, 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 a spe uh, very important special role in the loyalist team called the agent, as Moin described, that knows, every, mm -hmm. knows all the leakers. And uh, at the end of the game, if loyalists win the game uh, like by successfully completing three tasks, there's a trial phase that the leakers get to uh, uh, testify against one of the players saying that this player was the agent, right? If oh they yes God. correctly, and <laughs> let's say uh, Steve was the agent mm -hmm. and I'm the testifier. If I guess correctly that Steve was the agent and he already knew that Moin and I were the leakers, then we're going to turn the game and uh, leakers are actually going to win the game, even though they oh, lost in the shit. actual game. So mm. claiming powers, claiming oh, information, neat. like if you claim that you know that I'm the uh, uh, I'm one of the leakers, if you got that as a power, that investigation power, then I know that you're definitely not the agent because the agent mm. doesn't receive powers, right? Mm. So that's so that's the risk and reward. You're you're getting a reward by like uh, ousting me, like and saying that I'm a leaker, but you're also like risking. Uh, for for the leakers team to slowly getting closer to figure out who the actual agent is, and, and we and have a simpler we have a simpler uh, example of this. We have this cover uh, this power called confide, where you show like as a loyalist when you get the power, you know only loyalists get the power. You mm -hmm. can show someone else basically your card and tell them that oh hey I'm a loyalist, or I'm a staffer. Mm -hmm. I'm a loyalist, but I'm not the agent. And mm -hmm. if you if you confide with a loyalist, you create a you know, link, you, get, you, you basically create trust and you get one step closer to, to winning, but you can, maybe you will confide to a leaker and they will immediately know, verify that you're not the agent. So that's like, at that moment, you have to decide, like, is this a good time? Like, do I have a good educated guess? That's where like the deduction part of it come, mm -hmm. uh, comes into play. So uh, and, some, just to add to that, sometimes as a leaker, it's more important than to pay close attention to how everyone else is playing and uh, study their behavior to figure out who the agent is than to like use the deception to get on task forces and leaking. Sometimes mm -hmm. leakers decide that strategy to win the game instead of like going on task forces, leaking everything in. Can, can a loyalist leak shit as well? Can they sabotage the whole thing? No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> the word loyalist really means something, Andy. 
Not to me, it doesn't seem. I, I know that. I specifically it has, know that. It's, it's a blank <laughs> spot in the dictionary. I don't know what that means. It's not so, my vocabulary. one of the things that, that, I, that I notice about a lot of these games is, especially if you're playing with a lot of the same people, um, this sort of meta begins to form where it's like, this is the way you get to figure it out the fastest or this is the strategy you use you know like for example i i don't I know we keep going back to among us but that's the one i have the most experience with um you know it's like oh never vote on seven always do um if you're the killer always leave the person that is vouching for you alive or whatever like there's always these specific plays that you do and it's almost like if you watch enough videos and you and you could write this stuff down, it's almost like a mathematical formula. Like you say, if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that, you win. Um, I mean, there's very slight, uh, you know, adjustments to that, variations to that, but that's some, that is, that is what happens. Um, and you have to wait for new maps and maybe new, new mechanics, like, uh, where they add, um, like uh, there's the crew link thing that added so that you could, there's like voice chat in the game that added kind of a new layer to it and everything like that. But outside of that, how does your game avoid people falling into this same kind of pattern of if I'm this, then this is the strategy. How does it change from game to game? We spent a lot of time uh, just to, you know, fight meta. Uh, because mm -hmm. it's basically a game. It's like a meta game between the game designer and players, right? Players are always, this is this famous quote about game design. Players are always trying to optimize the fun out of the game if they're given the chance. <laughs> and this is huge in social deduction and uh, players kind of like, uh, and even like different groups create their own meta. Uh, because we were so like, we were a huge fan of Avalon and we played so much, we knew some of these metas and there are online versions of these games as well. So we would go to the communities that in these, that, that playing these games and see like what kind of meta uh, is like the law there. Like the, the, the people, if you don't follow the meta in those mm -hmm. communities, you're, you're, you're a leaker automatically, you're a bad guy. And it doesn't matter like if you have your own opinion. And I really hate this in these games. I mm. want players to feel agency and make their own decisions. So every time I saw someone that like is trying, uh, can justify, like if you can have a rational case that this meta is good, people are gonna follow you. Mm -hmm. So we basically took away, I think we took away everything, but this game has to go like we played much more and we'll see like what people do with that, you know, with the game. But at least in the, in the groups that we have tested it, uh, this is this is something that we really try to uh, avoid. Uh, I, I'll give you an example. For example, in Avalon, uh, for each task force, you have five chances. If you miss like five chances, like loyalists, basically good guys, have five chances to pick a task force. If they don't pick a task force, the game automatically is won by bad guys. So you have a mechanic that forces them to you know agree at some point. Uh, and we realized that, and that there is this uh, meta in this game called Hammer, which like online communities call it Hammer. And it's like, never vote until the fourth uh, voting, because we have five chances. Always, you know, make it, you know, always like downvote the first and second one and go for third and fourth, because that gives us a chance uh, so that the leakers, you know, it gives us more gameplay to deduct stuff from. And it, uh, and maybe leakers, you know, make a mistake there, which is kind of dumb because like every if everybody know, knows the meta, it just becomes like an action that you go through and you basically have optimized the fun out of the uh -huh. game. But we kind of we we changed that mechanic. We had that mechanic for a while, and we realized that people are doing this uh, as well. And we changed that mechanic to a like you have a chat, you have a limited number of times that you can disagree in the whole game. Now. It depends in the situation. Sometimes people discuss and say, "Hey, let's go through the first tasks fast, and let's not let's let's keep our you know savings." Basically, we we have this mechanic called president's deadline, which is like the president has given you like ten chances to disagree. If you disagree too much in the whole game, or you can save this for the later tasks, which are probably more important, or you can try to you know use them for the earlier ones. And every every group plays differently. 
And there is no, like, there's no rational case to how to do it. People have to like use their judgment in the moment. And that was very important for us uh, in the game design. So we are actively watching people, how, how they react to the new changes. And we are always escaping, you know, chances for them to create meta. But I, I guess that, you know, when the game goes live and we release and more people play, we, we're going to have more, you know, issues. We're going to have more meta coming out and, yeah, you know, exactly. we're going to patch it at some point. Yeah, I think uh, we, we've we removed the uh, classic metas that existed in uh, Resistance on Avalon. But as Moin said, uh, if the, uh, when the uh, game comes out, there and should, a million the, people yeah. play it. Or then like there, we will see some new <laughs> metas that, that is uh, specific to our game. Because uh, we have so many different mechanics from those uh, older Resistance and Avalon games, and like those new mechanics might be the reason for these new metas that mm. we can't think of right now. That's interesting. It's so it's, it's, it's almost it's impossible to guess what where pe- where players take your game. Mm-hmm. Right. It's almost like when you know one of the biggest things about testing is trying to break the game, and that's like almost a very unique way to break a game but it's very specific to this genre um because like like you like you did say you're 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 playing the fun out of the game like you're taking you're taking that journey away and you're just getting to the win or lose part um and that that's always it's always impressive when you know the somebody could win a game very quickly sure but when that's their mission every time and they figure out the most optimal way of doing it and then they just get everybody to just they bu- they essentially bully their way through to like say no this is how we do it, and then it, it does it just takes the fun out. So you like you guys have this unique kind of approach where you're gonna let these things happen, but you're also going you're not afraid to change with the game, how the game plays in some aspects to make sure that you're always keeping that on its toes and and. It's very fluid in that way. What, what makes what makes the game so so fluid? Like how how can you just slightly adjust things here and there and not completely throw everything off? This is actually a very Casper. Do you want to take this because we this is actually something else that we we really cared about in the design. Because if you if you change things too much, then like you have to like basically change your rule book every time. Exactly. So yeah. You have to you have to create mechanics that are like conceptually are rigid and like they're the same concept but uh, use different tweak them yes so we have right. this concept of power drops that happen when a task fails to help like to kind of uh you know nudge the loyalists to to win the game but what kind of power you put there is is important and uh, we have some powers that we've tested long enough and they're going to be in the initial release and uh, these are going to be basically the main powers of the game but this is where we can, within the confines of what a power is, you can, you can define a lot of powers. And that's where the power, of the, you know, the platform comes into play. Because you have people playing you know, on their phones and there's a screen, there's, there, are, there, there are a lot of powers that you can define. And we have tested many powers, threw some away and uh, picked some. And we're going to have an experimental mode because the hardcore players are really important for us. And mm-hmm. we want the hardcore we want the hardcore players to enjoy the game and feel like they can contribute. And we're going to have an experimental mode uh, to people to come, you know, and, and, and suggest powers. Uh, we're going to put new powers in, see how they take the game uh, and where they take the game. Um, so that's going to be the core of the game. But we also do things to make it accessible. And our philosophy in terms of, you know, uh, what the game should be is that it's a really good game if you're a hardcore player and you're going to love it, but we're going to make it easier for you to, in, to, to invite your friends because it's going to be much easier to set up. We're going to add like narrated tutorials. We're going to add tips on your phone. It's just going to be much, much easier for you to take this game to your friends and say, let's play. Um, Castro, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, sure, but I want to go back to your question uh, about like how the game is fluid enough to... Uh help us make changes to uh, mm-hmm. fight the metas that comes into this type of game type of games uh, I think the uh, so so it's gonna be difficult right we don't want to make a change that uh, as Moin said we don't want to change our rule book if we if we're making a change to a game to the game uh, but uh, I think uh, I think Moin also mentioned this too uh, the power drops the powers are the main thing that we can 
actually make changes to and give updates on. So like, let's say uh, there's a meta in the game and we, we can think of a power that can fight that meta. Uh, we will just add that power instead of going back and changing the whole rule book by like changing a different mechanic. The powers actually gives us that possibility to make small changes without changing the rule book. That's awesome. It, it's funny when, when we think of like play testing a game or like watching others play a game, it's, are they having a good time? Are they getting stuck anywhere? Is it too challenging for them? Are there bugs and noticing while they're playing? But for a genre like this, it's, you guys are watching intently how folks are playing this game. Hmm. How, what was the biggest takeaway watching others play this game? What have you learned the most? that maybe you need to think about in the game's development? That you can't assume anything about how people behave in certain situations. Mm. I think that's what, what was my main <laughs> takeaway. And I'm going to go back to the fact that we prototyped for a long time and landed on this specific version. Uh, 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 it's really hard to make party games because you have mm -hmm. to test it with people and see how people react. The iteration, the loop that you go. So if anyone is out there trying to make party games, don't, you have to test it. You have to change, you have to do a small change and test it and see how big, like, you know, the behavior of the players will change. And, uh, and the reason that we are building this on top of Avalon is that there is a lot of wisdom in the design. You cannot, we did try this. We cannot just come out with like a, super different party game the basic mechanic like I, i'm sorry like super different like social deduction games if you look mm -hmm. at all there is an evolution of social deduction games and you can pinpoint like for example secret hitler is very important and the designer has like two articles of how they're like changing mechanics and why they added mechanics to you know tweak the genre to like there, there is an analysis and, and, and in their analysis, they have a mathematical analysis and they say that this is kind of rubbish. Uh, we realize that we have to play test the game. Uh, at first they were going very, you know, mathematically about it. And, 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 and we, we basically learned the same lesson and that you have to play test and play test and play test. Uh, and that's why we chose this because at, at this point, we, we, we don't have a lot of risk profile. Like we, we can't take huge risks. Uh, we see a lot of potential in this platform and it can be explored further, but all the other ideas would need m many, many more months of playtesting to be something. And we didn't have a community. We didn't. So we try to build on top of, you know, and add, 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 add imp like improve what we know and what we really deeply understand about the genre. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, if anyone out there is trying to build a party game or a group game, uh, you know, uh, take note because it's, <laughs> uh, we were shocked by how, how difficult it is. And getting people to play, going back to the pandemic point, mm -hmm. it's, it helped us because like people were willing, our friends were willing to come and play test with us because they were in lockdown. <laughs> it's hard to get people together to play a game. It's easier during a pandemic, uh, it turns out. But, uh, but it's, it's a big challenge and that's why you don't see a lot of you don't see them coming out every every day like at least good ones uh it's it's really hard so now that you've sort of built your your little audience you're following your play your your the people that you're getting collecting information from and all that stuff and you've already spoken about you've alluded to the fact that this platform could be very versatile for you um where do you see you guys going with this do you see you yourselves kind of sticking with just uh, the social deduction route and just changing maybe scenarios and like adding different flavor flavor to it? Or do you see yourselves making different games utilizing the cell phone to screen platform? Uh, well, the first thing that we're looking forward to right now is launching Republic of Jungle. That's the first thing that we're looking sure, forward sure. to. Sure, sure. Of course. <laughs> after that, what we have in mind is that we've, we've built this platform, right? Uh, we've coded this platform. We, 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 we try to run it. Uh, we, we, try, we try to code it in a way that is uh, generic to other games too, so we can quickly prototype different ideas on top of it. And we're not only like uh, limited to this type of social deduction games. So after Republic of Jungle, what we would like to do, I think both Moin and I want to explore different ideas. We, we've already explored some ideas before sure. like settling on Republic of Jungle, but we want to con keep continue, uh, continue doing the same thing. 
And uh, maybe we go back to some of the same uh, prototypes that we did uh, in the three years that we talked about. Uh, but yeah, uh, we think there's a lot of potential in this platform, like bringing in, bringing uh, uh, more mid-core to hardcore tabletop games to uh, the uh, uh, device as the input platform, which is, a, we, we, we call it Jackbox platform because they were the people who invented it. Sure. So, yeah. Do, do you see yourselves maybe like going out and like contracting already made games, like trying to get IP on board to be like, hey, let us translate this to our platform and make a digital version, but it's not like sit at your computer and sit there, you know, with your mouse and keyboard. Like we, we have this cool platform, like you could, you could reach out to, to certain publishers or game makers and stuff like that. Have you guys explored that as an option? Not, not yet. It's, it's, it's a tricky thing. If you have considered this uh, and it's like too early to say, and we have, you know, we have a ton of ideas ourselves and, sure. and that's an option too. But the, as, as I, as I said before, this platform surprised us in the way that, you know, it's, it's hard to design games and you have to kind of design games for the platforms. And I mm -hmm. want to emphasize, we didn't just digitize a board game. Right. We we designed a game for the platform, and and that's that's hard, but that's something that we're open to. Like basically, there are many paths that we can go. If I think if we want to stay in you know a social deduction and like do another project, I would much rather like grow Republic of Jungle, and you know my vision is to like have it as a home for like a lot of social deduction fans, and you know, so they can feel like they can come in and give input and we make it better and we make it like maybe use the same ip to do like a i don't know a dlc that like explores another game mechanic uh, that the community likes is, is good but we also have as uh Kastra said uh, we have this platform we've tried to make it scalable and versatile i personally like to explore some ideas that are more casual uh i know that jackbox jackbox has uh was the first they, they were the first to like kind of explore this platform but they had a they had ip and they had they had incentive to go for the broad market so their games are usually like very casual word play very simple games and we are trying to make a more niche like meat core to hardcore game on the yeah. platform and there is like a whole universe i think there's a whole universe of ex possibilities uh, that that just need time because that you know that loop is so hard. That design loop is so so slow. Uh, yeah, but but it's interesting. Like we are, we are, we we we, ha we have to, we have to see where we land after you know after maybe maybe it's gonna be a flop and nobody will talk about us after this <laughs> and and we'll go you know work you know on. I, I, I think I think I your <laughs> your style and and just when we first started this conversation, I had said Andy showed me this trailer, mm -hmm. and it's so colorful, it pops, it has so much personality, it's goofy as hell when you first look at it, and like you realize that obviously that's that's something. Obviously, you have that you you have your line in the water, and you're starting to reel in. You know, just based on sound and and sight without even actually playing the game and seeing the people arguing with each other in the trailer, you already have that, that lure in the water and you're starting to, to reel us in. And then you start to see how people are actually interacting with each other and being shocked at the, at the, at the, at the results. And, and you see that and you, and you start to think, Oh, how would I fool my friends? Oh, like, what would I do to, to this person? But playing just with your group of friends, um, is is like one aspect of these kinds of games because it's going to really succeed on how you can play with people you don't know. If you're if you if you don't have friends or you don't have access to a, a a large group of people, what is your solution to keeping the social aspect of that with the uh anonymity of somebody just hopping on the internet and wanting to play a game? 
go for it, Castro. This is like something that Castro is very. This is you, about. huh? This is this was this was your <laughs> this, is, this was your thing. Moment. Here we go, everybody, yeah. stand yeah. back. Here we go, <laughs> baby. This is it, baby. <laughs> Castro, yeah. like we have been dis discussing this for months, and like at first I was like maybe we do this twenty percent, and I'm like now I'm like maybe we do this ninety five percent, Castro. But like I, I'm keeping that five percent to myself. But like go for it. <laughs> yeah, because at first we were thinking that we were only going to develop this party game, and uh, like Jackbox, we we're only going to care about the people who are going to play it in a party setting and we, we, we're not going to have an online mode or anything uh, but like this past few months maybe the last three months we've been thinking about different ideas on how to make this a online game as well so we can have a public lobby and we can have matchmaking and people can play with strangers but there are a lot of challenges with that uh, the main one being the toxicity in an uh, online game like this because it's social deduction and people are going to probably type in the chat and like you can't control what's going to happen there. Mm -hmm. So right now we're thinking about designing a different communication uh, mechanic. So uh, instead of like just giving the people uh, the ability to like type as many words as they want in the chat, we want to limit that to uh, both... Uh, limit the toxicity and also actually make a game out of that communication mechanic and communication system that is kind of different from the party experience. It might be a whole different experience. Like you, you have to use that communication system, the new communication system that we're making to try to like use it as a, a mechanic to uh, deceive people or like deduct and figure out who the leakers are. And, uh, I can't give you much more details because we're still not 100% sure, sure about all the details, but uh, we're, we're, we're in the process of designing the, the communication mechanic. And we think we're going to give the online mode uh, as a follow-up update after the game launch. So like if we're launching in September, then we're going to probably two or three months after the main launch, we're going to uh, uh, give a follow-up update and add the online mode to the game. That's awesome. That's that's great that you have that like in mind though, because like it's it's such a it's such a limitless it has limitless potential when you can open it up like that. But also, again, you're opening Pandora's box. Like you're that's really a weird. lot of a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you, when you see that stuff, if there's a chat, it's it's also really hard to to communicate like that too. Um, there's a lot of nuance that's lost. In, in in text or whatever. So if you gamify it a little bit and you make it maybe just symbols or, you know, emojis or whatever, like, and, and that's what's being kind of like flashed back and forth and you people are kind of deciphering that as they go, that could be a fun, that could be a fun mechanic, like changing the way people communicate um, in their, in your own little language. I think, I think that's brilliant. I think, and, and I hope you guys follow up with that and, and, and I hope it works out for you. I hope that whatever you guys settle on, it, it like clicks and people really dig it and and then you could refine it and, and put it out there. But that, that's awesome. And something else about this is that I, I, we worry about branding as well. We know we have a great party game and that's one of the reasons that we postponed this to like as a post release because we, I, we want the world to see this as a party game first. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we're going to have an online mode. It's going to become like because we... I am sure that this is a great party game. I am not sure that the online mode is going to be a great game. Obviously, we're not going to release it if it's not great. But also the fact that you release it and people do stuff with it that you didn't expect is just tenfold more with, you know, with an online game than it is yeah. with a party game. So that that uncertainty really like makes me nervous. And I, I want to I, we really want to be careful about this. But it's something that is also excites us because that design uh problem to solve is like a really interesting design problem awesome all right andy you have any any last questions about uh republic I, you know i do okay. i i want to ask this earlier but i okay. put my back pocket so to the very, very now's end. the time why why animals as the avatars <laughs> that's actually a very good question so <laughs> they weren't animals originally we had these humans these weird humans like what the game was actually called palace intrigue Mm -hmm. And uh, we had these few humans that were like working at uh, the actual White House. So like we, were, we had a White House game. Mm. And then we were like, this is maybe too serious for a social deduction game. And like people mm -hmm. might not like the theme and the story. So 
how can we like make it more appealing to everyone? And, and the then Moin came up with this animal idea. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the real political news was just too real when we were working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was like, kind of well, depressing. People are going to just hate this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is too yeah, like that's a fine balance be- between like mirroring real world shenanigans. And then it's like, are you making a political statement here with your game or is it just a fun party game and i think yeah having the animals sort of removes it more from reality a little bit so people take it less seriously and that exactly people were taking it too, too seriously each other while, and while playing. exactly the same thing you said that uh everyone thought you were making a political statement which we didn't want to do at all so we were thinking about like what should we do to like not make people think about this stuff mm-hmm. and then the animal idea came up with Moin. and it's it's good it's meta and like we can make con- and like when you when, when you hear a joke and you make connection that's a moment in your head it's like ah, i got that joke and like that's also adds to the fun and there's a there's a tradition of using animals in like political cartoons and oh, stuff. of course so sure. wanna, yeah so we want to like kind of yeah, go back to like an that. animal farm I mean, that, that's uh, it. yeah, yeah, it goes exactly. way yeah back, so. going back yeah there's a tradition and <laughs> Yeah, that was the story. And by the way, I just wanted to, I have been waiting for an opportunity to say this, that the questions you're asking is so good. Like, I, like it's just... <laughs> We're it's, good like, thank you. That's, it's, that's We don't hear that often no, on the show, live. I'm, yeah, I'm live shocked. on the show. That's <laughs> usually an off-the-air conversation, but I, we appreciate that's that. Like, that's oh, fantastic. Did you capture that part? Did you record that? You hear that, no? listeners? It's lost the time? Cool. Tell your and friends. The interesting thing is that you said that you didn't prepare this question and you're just no, like, we don't. Them. No. no, we don't. We it's really on don't. the fly. <laughs> because it, it, the I, thing I don't the, believe that it's 100 percent fact. The only one that's prepared <laughs> is the opening question, the leading question, and that's right. because Andy usually makes it like some sort of ridiculous question. It has um, to be the most bullshit thing ever. Right. So that's why the thing that I make that I precise. that that um that I believe makes a great interview is something that I heard when the late Larry King had also said, but I didn't know he actually said it, but he said, what makes a great interview is listening and asking why. Mm -hmm. If, if, if you're just listening to a person and you, and you don't have any, anything that you're trying to get out of them, you just want them to talk. They will tell you everything. You just have to be inquisitive and ask Mm -hmm. why. And I think that's what makes such great, uh, the, the, the greatest interviewers out there, I think really try to do that. It's not about let's get you on here because I want to know what happened behind the scenes of this thing that happened. Like we could have, we could have spent all, all interview talking about how, what you used to do at Microsoft, but that's not the story we're here to tell, you know, like that, but that's, but that could be what, what other people would, would, would harp on. They'd, they'd hear about that and that's where they would want to go. But I've also gone through Castro's Twitter feed and I have some follow-up questions. No, I'm kidding. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Abort. Um, all right. Why? But now, now speaking of great questions, now it's time to oh, get yes. into uh, the final segment of the show. This is how we like to end every show. Oh, and it is a rapid fire section where we're just going to ask you some silly questions, get some silly off the cuff answers. And some of these are going to be existential. You're going to, you might have mm-hmm. a crisis on your hands. Your, your brains might melt. Mm-hmm. Um, and other, right. and, and, we, we may embarrass you, you may blush, or you may laugh, you may cry. We don't know. Uh, you may hit, you may, you may uh, alt F4 out of this conversation, out of this program. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to start us off. Um, just yank the router out of the wall. Yeah, you're going to just, just. I, I already have my guard up. Like, just like... <laughs> we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to start a little easy, but mm, mm, no. if you were making yourself in Republic, what animal would you be? Mm. Oh, the the pain on your face! I know. It's a very. I guess it's already deep, Stephen. Jeez, I thought this was pretty surface. It already got existential. You know what? I'll I'll make it better. I'll make it better, so you don't have to be introspective. We'll make Mm -hmm. this. We'll make this uh, an outward question. Okay, you assign the animal to the other person. That's better. I like that better. Um, I so should I assign? Yes. Yeah, and you, you do, you do it okay. first, so yes. I can, I can, yeah, I can get back at uh, it. Any, <laughs> any fish or shark or any underwater animal? Oh, okay. For Moin is good. I like, I like. Okay. So you can put his head in a bowl of water 
and mm. then he can walk around like that. Like like some sort of octopus. <laughs> like head, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I could see that. He can a little... his head in a bowl of yeah, water. I like that. Human body. I like that idea. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and then he can't sound like when he's talking, he's going to sound funny. He's gonna have so the echo. You, you're always <laughs> going to have. You're I'd always laughing the, when I'd he's be talking. Be careful at the office, Moeen. They find your head in a bowl of water one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moeen. What about Cass? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, a bird, I don't know. Okay, an owl, so sort maybe? of bird. Okay, yeah. Ooh, an owl. Very Ooh, wise. I like that. Very wise. Yeah. Okay, yes. now before I kick it to Andy, do us. <laughs> <laughs> this is already so ridiculous. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm not seeing you asleep, so that's, that's true. You but, you, but you're hearing me. <laughs> you know, you know his. You have a sense of his voice, his personality, what kind of asshole he is. I so see. If I if I if I turned on a camera right now, it would screw up all my boxes on my overlay. So okay. I can't even. How turn about it this? On. How about this? Make it. Make a guess now. Then we'll do the reveal at the end of the show, and then you'll see how close you are to reality. <laughs> like, oh shit, I was way off. <laughs> do I sound obese? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of cow. We, we actually have a rhino in our game. That's yes, you do. I, yes, I can't imagine him being you. No, like, when you're talking, the, the, no. the rhino one, <laughs> strong rhino. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I I I could do Andy. Not a, I, I, I could I could give Andy. I a, do not fucking say manatee. I'll kill no, you. you're a cockatoo. <laughs> A cockatoo. You're a All cockatoo right. with that nice little flip on on the top mm -hmm. of your head with the with the <laughs> feathers, just, like yeah, just, just and I could see flamboyant enough. Yes, yeah, huh? just flamboyant enough, right. but not all the way flamboyant. You're not right, a peacock. Right. You're not no. a peacock. You're just that's a little bit too much cockatoo. You have personality. Yeah. Every once in a while, but you could be a little sneaky. I like it. Right. What about me, Andy? You 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 do me. Oh God, you. Um, yeah, come on. I'm seeing fox for you. I like that. That's good. Because yeah. I think when you're backed in a corner, you'll you can fuck some. People I will up. punch you right in the throat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm getting. At okay, <laughs> okay, Andy, now you know that about foxes. <laughs> <laughs> like like we said, Andy has dark secrets. You don't want to know them all. Yeah. Um. Dark. He also has some some fox <laughs> fur scarves. All right, Andy, you uh hit us. Hit, it's your question. All Go right, ahead. between both of you, which one is the loyalist and which one is the leaker? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the leaker, I think. I'm uh, the leaker. I actually thought that I'm the leaker. I sometimes oh, no. say stuff that I that we should, we're not ready to like reveal, and then <laughs> this is my kind of company. It's like <laughs> sounds like something the agent would say. I know, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> but here's here's like I, I'm gonna tell you something about our dynamic. Like mm. I'm the guy that comes and it's like we should like rebuild the game. Like we should. I, I come up with ideas as like are crazy like we have worked like a year and I, I come, this this whole part about the game i, I want to change it mm -hmm. and castro is like saboteur your left wait. brain aren't you <laughs> like yeah I, I i get excited i get kind of almost manic and like, yeah yeah you're, and you're, then yeah. he's the calm guy's like let's talk about this and <laughs> yeah. then at the end of the game <laughs> at the end of the conversation like nothing has changed almost <laughs> but I want to say this, that we like what, what I really like about like, you know, our, our dynamic is that like we disagree more than we agree, uh, but like we disagree fast. <laughs> like, mm. And, and that, that, that helps us to, you know, to to and some of the best mechanics of the game, like has come out, out of this mechanic, like uh, this dynamic, like I've come up with an idea, which was stupid. <laughs> Astro pointed out that stupid. And I was like. But I want this to change. I was like, there are easier ways. And Castro was like, there are easier ways to change that. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, you do it. And then Castro did it. And and I was like, okay, that's good enough. Not not that what not what I had in mind, but that's good enough. Mm -hmm. And then compromise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that that balance, <laughs> that balance was was really good. And we had some some mechanics that came out of that mechanic and that, that dynamic that was that really surprised both of us. It's really fun as a game designer when you add something and it's better than you thought. Mm. Like when it plays better than you thought. And uh, the best mechanics, you know, were created this way. <laughs> if you were, uh, if you were on top of the Empire State Building, and you could spit off the top of the Empire State Building, who would you hope it hits <laughs> on the ground? <laughs> Just go. What? It's like my <laughs> list. My list is too long for the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How uh, much time do we have? It left? could be a specific person. <laughs> it could be a type of person. It could be, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, 
do they have to be in New York or does it happen to be New York? Do no, it's just, it just ha it's just a perfect like, scenario. You're yeah, at the Empire State Building, there, you spit they're off there. it, they're there. They're, they're the one that gets the loogie on top of the, on top of the old dome, as I it mean, were. The, the guy I'm thinking about used to live in New York, but not anymore. <laughs> yes, yeah, I got you. <laughs> if you can think about the guy. <laughs> yes, he, he might be evading certain yeah. things in New York. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm going to I'm going to pick um <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to pick a comedian like mm. yeah uh, I know the the comedian that can make a good joke about it maybe like Louis CK mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah Louis CK would and, just and be like was that too, fucking spit really so like, your plan yeah, is he's going to go and like make, make it and and then I watch the com comedy and like is yeah. like oh that was good yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're you're basing on giving him material. That's right. your whole angle here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're doing it and it's happening, you know, I contribute to art in that way. You know, yeah, yeah. it's like it's like it's like pun it's like punching a child. Right. You know, it'll, exactly. It'll get tougher. And, it, it'll get uh, yeah. And that and that'll make somebody else's funny story. <laughs> so, okay. are you gonna be? Are you gonna like? like let him know like he, his phone rings and you're like hello and you're like hey louis ck fuck you look up and he looks up and like he gets hit with your spit <laughs> or is it like he it's just he, like the like how do you know like, like it's not you raining it's a beautiful we have that option I'm just, okay no, never mind never mind just, move on move on move just... on We're, it's rapid fire it's rapid fire not dissertations <laughs> rapid fire all right andy next question <laughs> uh moeen what word best describes casra when he's been drinking too much when when the day's over and he's like, God, these ideas are just so stupid of his, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and he's had too much to drink. <laughs> what word comes to mind? I just I have a simple mind, so the word drunk comes to my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. but... Okay. <laughs> All right. But um no, yeah, that's just he, he's All just right. drunk. He's a good drunk. He's like okay, a good drunk, what, like the we'll average drunk. Like when you when I say word drunk, what what do you picture? Inebriated. Like, it could be a lot of things. You could be yeah. playful, right, so Slight, slightly uncoordinated. We're gonna and we're gonna hit that up. With, I'm so uh, bad at this like rapid fire. Like I no, know it's okay. It's just, it's, we're gonna yeah. now we're gonna ask Cash for the same question. So Moeen's sure, been drinking. Yeah, I know the guys. answer for that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> He okay. can talk for two hours straight without pausing when he's drunk or high or whatever. <laughs> that's, that's, it, that's fair. Listen, mm -hmm. some some people get quiet. Some people, they just, they can't shut up. I get it. Stop talking. Mm -hmm. I get it. Would you trust the other person to dress you in the morning? Oh, that's good. <laughs> No. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's good. I like that. Yeah. That's why they're both leakers. You don't they don't trust anyone. Yeah. Not even each other. That's just that's just crazy. All right. We've gone too long without asking this question, Steven. Pineapple mm -hmm. on pizza, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> I I I yes. But I was no for a long time. I was like, hell no for a long time. Yeah, me too. Exactly. Something changed. The first time I had it, I was like, dude, I should have had this much earlier. <laughs> like, it was like maybe three years ago, four years ago. Mm. And I was like, why didn't I have a pineapple on pizza before? Oh, so you didn't try it and you were like, I no. don't want it? No, I, I tried I it like, and I was like, I hate it. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't like, I, the, the idea of having a pineapple on a pizza was like just disgusting to me <laughs> until I had it. <laughs> sure. Mm. Yeah, I it, listen. I, that's how it always is, isn't it? It takes all kinds. Mm -hmm. I have this memory <laughs> with my friend when we were ordering pizza, and it was like, "Do you want pineapple?" And then we look at each other and laugh out loud, and <laughs> <laughs> and that was my, our stance, like on pineapple on pizza. It was just we were so vocal about it that, <laughs> that it was just a joke. Gentlemen, <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich, mm. or is a hot dog a taco? Mm. Sandwich. Let's talk about the concept of phenomenology. We're going <laughs> to take away the properties of something what is until it's not that thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you uh -huh. want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> that that, that kind of sounds like when you have a new idea for the game. Let's yeah. let's take everything uh, out of this. But you see now, you said I'll, a hot I'll dog. I'll call it a sandwich. Yeah, I'll call it a sandwich. Because a hot dog without a bun is still a hot dog. Oh, that's right. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. 
So, so what are we what are you really asking here? <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. It, it's, it's a strange question. It, Andy, just yeah, just yeah. ask your question. Like just So right. does the sandwich really need to have a bun or when you say existential, I was like your your first question is like why are there things instead of the why no, is there something not, instead not, of nothing? We're, we're not like, that we're not that smart. If you if you could see me also right now, if if you could actually see me on camera, you would know that that's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Would you rather have an actual physical get out of jail free card so you can commit any crime your heart desire and get away with it? Or would you rather have a key that unlocked any door in the world? Any person's house, bank vault, that key, key opens all key. of it. Yeah, me too. They want key. the keys. All right. Wow. I, fast. Just, I, I wasn't like, I, if there was I mean, no law, I wouldn't break it anyways. So I can, I can <laughs> think about a scenario of like having the key and ending up in jail because like unlocking the door that I had don't have. Yeah. To <laughs> mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. but that key could also unlock the jail cell. So there's that. Sure. Yeah. But they're taking that shit away, bro. That's more. <laughs> like, well, you, you're going to prison. I mean, how you, far you, up you, can you stick that? You're like, listen, not that listen. far. I don't think. <laughs> Listen, you can find places. You can find places. I mean, <laughs> is it? I mean, yeah. All right. Maybe instead of keys, it's just like you have the ability to lock any, unlock any door. I don't know. This is weird. You, these questions easy. are weird. Uh, let's do a few more. Let's do a few more. Um, what is the dumbest way you've injured yourself? Hmm. I rode a bike that didn't have brakes. Ooh. Yikes. Oh, yikes. And I didn't know God. that it doesn't have brakes. Yikes. That was that one. like that's right not, that's at not the a rapid moment. fire story though. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I haven't got injured that much. But I mean the 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 one time that I broke a finger, bro broke a bone in my body, but it was a finger that I was playing a basketball. Like who who would break yeah. a finger playing basketball? Jamming fingers <laughs> is a basketball well, yeah. injury. Is it was it like a For pass? Sure. It, it was a pass. Was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just did one of these and it was like, Kaka, yeah, Kaka. Yeah. and you're like, oh no, what happened? And all of a sudden that's your that's finger's crooked. Yeah, I know. No, I know. Yeah. I, I did that once. So it, it didn't break, but I dislocated my finger um, at basketball practice. And I had one of those rub dirt on it coaches, like where he was just like, ah, you're fine. Rub dirt on it. Rub dirt so on I it, yeah. was like, but look, and it's scientific. I think it was this finger. Yeah, I think it was. The, I think it was my my ring finger. Now I'm was in like, pain and I need to wash my oh, hands. <laughs> I wouldn't say a ninety degree burn or a ninety degree turn at my knuckle, <laughs> but it was pretty damn close. And he looked at it and he goes, he grabs it and just sh yanks it out, like just oh. straightens it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, I, I think I might have been eleven, <laughs> and. It, that that was my my basketball injury, but yeah, I'm glad it didn't break though, because that would have really lovely. sucked. Lovely. Would you, if you had a time machine, would you rather travel back in time or forward in time? Hmm. That's hard because I'm a nostalgic person and I want to mm. go back in time, but also it's exciting to go forward in the future, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to see yeah, what's I'm, going to happen. To see forward. if 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 anything is left. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah just you know but do you want to know did, did we fix this shit let me see what happens How more what happens to republic of jungle like i want to know that <laughs> you, you, you go into the future as a giant billboard republic of jungle 33 like what the fuck <laughs> but yeah i mean imagine like if you go forward in the future and then like nothing exists it's just nothingness you and show you up and it's like, one. God, there's a lot of fire here. What is happening? <laughs> Why is the sun so big? Yeah. Oh, God, I went too far. You, you have like a, a split second to think that and then die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have a go back button, but you just have right. like two seconds to do it. Right. Um, you got to act really fast on that. If you could sit around, sit, sit at a bar and have a drink with one person, one person historical person mm. so they're gone they're so dead cool. but a person in history who would you want to sit down and have a beer with it's a good one hmm. mm. See, that, a bit, so that, many. That, that's a little deep mm -hmm. uh, yeah 
Um, I, because I, I think of like more old, like ancient people, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like just mm-hmm. something like 2000, like I don't know, Euclid or something. And it's like, okay, he would probably sound very stupid <laughs> to me because <laughs> like, he, he, would, he, he would be missing on like 2000 years of context. Right. So, right. <laughs> like I don't buy the hype. <laughs> yeah. And I wish, I, honestly, I wish I, I could have a conversation with George Carlin. I, I want to go because. Oh, that like, is a really yeah. good choice. That's a great choice. That's a really good choice. You like your comedians. It's like, clearly yeah, I do. I, yeah. yeah, I recently uh, finished the, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X and mm-hmm. uh, he was a very good talker and a very good like he had some weird ideas, but like some of them were like worth I, I want to like sit down with him. Yeah, but that's and talk part about of the conversation. Because, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, his uh, ideas was, were forming a lot, like changing a lot. So evolving a lot and like at the end like the one and a uh, half year at the end like before he was uh assassinated like he changed most of the things that he was thinking like five years before that so i want to talk about those stuff like and see where, where the book should have ended like because <laughs> the autobiography ended at, at the point that he was he got assa- assassinated and the mm. and someone else described how he got assassinated yeah but ter- I wanted, like, terrible ending yeah. terrible ending to the terrible. book by the way it's yeah. I, why would you i don't I recommend it. ending a totally book that spoiled way it, yeah by the way. spoilers Spoiler um <laughs> wow andy hit us up with our last question let's do it oh the very very the last, last question oh my god you guys all right this is it. it's been a lot of fun but now we're gonna ask a question that's going to be awkward and horrible but it's also good it, it's also it's also a lot of fun at the same time sure all right this is it you guys you ready you can yeah. eat you can eat answer one after the other okay mm-hmm. and the question is as follows andy or steven <laughs> well i don't see steven so I'm now. tired of that i'm tired of that as an excuse okay <laughs> yeah. you have plenty of context here what if you were blind all right what if you never didn't see anyone? They probably still yeah, pick. You could right. still make judgments. They probably still pick. God, you're then I pick Steve. Then. That damn right, you do. Yeah. Could bullied you right into that. This, this isn't a <laughs> you know. This isn't a debate, Steve. That's not how we do things. We're not we're not playing the game. He's locked in that answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. So did you pick Andy or Steve? He, he, I think he's picked Steven. So clearly, okay. I so I'll pick now. Andy. That, then Just that's to be fair, here. and that's how it goes. Because I, I did, think it was unfair to, to, Andy, to change does, your. How, how did that feel when he said, "So I picked Andy"? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, a win's a win. Okay. That's how I see it. If that's how the you W is in the W, w. column. <laughs> that's right. And that, folks, is going to bring us to the end of the show. If you want to, uh, Jesus Christ, this this is a good one. I like this one. If you would like to be, uh, I don't know, follow us and whatnot uh, on social media, we are at dual underscore screens on Twitter, and we are at dual screens on Instagram. If you want to follow me, I am at batchild27. Andy is at pantsguy, and our Facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash DS podcasts. Gentlemen. Where can everybody find you on social media and find Republic and all that fun stuff? Go for it, Moy. Go on Steam and wishlist Republic of Jungle. That's the best thing you can do. We have a demo live. Join our Discord. Uh, go to republicofjungle.com. Uh, there's a Discord link there. There's email list. There's our Steam page. Whatever you need to know is on republicofjungle.com. Uh, we really appreciate if you join our Discord. If you like this kind of game, we have a really tight community and it's growing. And we are we are a community based game. Like we are trying to, uh, we are a community first game. Like we are trying to make a community and like uh, it's gonna be. We don't see it separate as the game. That's that's how we feel about it. Uh, so republicofjungle.com. Awesome. You can also find the Twitter account and everything on republicofjungle.com. Sure. So everything's there. Awesome. Well. That's going to do it. We did it. We made it to the finish line. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Moeen. Thank you, Kazra. This was awesome. This was a great show. Andy, do you have any final thoughts before we leave? You know, I want to get this game as soon as possible. Let's do it. That's all about and to start being an asshole. Let's do it. And let's... let's you're would you come on Would you come on, on the stream if you want to play it? Yeah. Uh, play it yeah. Yeah, we yeah. would. Yeah, 100% we would. yes. Yeah, we would. 
We would have. We would love to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Thank you, you listeners. Thank you, viewers. And as always, please be excellent to each other.